Greetings everyone, Irish Trekkie back with another Star Trek The Official Starships Collection issue review from Eagle Moss, this time featuring issue 121, we have the SS Hota. Now this is an Antares class ship, quite a large ship by the looks of it, and actually quite weighty. So um, before we look into this model, let's have a look at the magazine first and uh, see what goodies lay inside, shall we? So here we have the front cover of the Sosha. But I, that name can be pronounced several different ways. Hosa, Soja, you know, listen, it's up to you. Uh, you may not like the way I do. But anyway, this SS. So it's an Antares class ship, launched 23rd century, crew of 12, length 270 meters. And uh, maybe not a lot of you are familiar with the ship, but, you know, it has had uh, an interesting presence uh, through Star Trek. So let's see what uh, goodies lay inside here, shall we? So we have our four sections uh, about the ship, many reuses of the studio model, uh, Johnny's and arming Deep Space Nine and on-screen appearances. So we have some close-up graphics of the ship itself. Additional information here, we have uh, warp capabilities, crew of 12, and of course, captained by Cassidy Yates as well. So I think Cassidy is a pretty, pretty fan favorite character and um, you know, you might see a familiar face over on uh, the Orville as well. Not the same character, but same actor as well. So listen, check it out. Pretty good show. Pretty fun, lighthearted. Anyway, here we have uh, the SS Sosha. So um, it was an Antares class freighter that was commanded by Captain Cassidy Yates in the 2370s. Um, it had a utilitarian appearance uh, with a boxy middle section that helps to maximize its load carrying capacity. It may not have been the most elegant of ships, but it was fit for purpose and was proved by the fact that it was still in operation more than a century after it had first been built. Exactly, you know, it was definitely fit for purpose. Here we have Cassidy in all her glory as well. So, uh, data feed here. Um, the Sosa was named after a Bantu South African group the social language also a system of click sounds that are pre that are unpresent in most other languages as well very very interesting and uh, you know when i initially got this i decided to kind of look up the name and kind of uh, i was very interested in in the background and um, the culture around the bantu um the south african group and um, definitely would urge you to check it out as well you know learning is always good so, um, talking about the practical layout, obviously it was a, a kind of hauler of a ship. Here we can get a sense of scale. Obviously, 270 meters pales in comparison to the size of D Space Nine, but that's a fantastic graphic. I really like that, and I like the propulsion units on it as well. Yeah, here we see uh, it for uh, basically with a Klingon bird of prey as well. So, um, anything interesting here? See, I don't want to kind of, as I always do, I don't dissect every freaking thing because I want you guys to. Uh, enjoy reading the magazines as well Here we have the ship profile So manipulated by the McKee Cassidy Ace wanted to help the McKee by delivering medical supplies to them Even though she knew that the Federation had banned them uh, branded them as terrorists exactly um, So the the exhaust engines cargo hatches cargo hold uh, loading latch main bridge up at the bow of the ship um, subspace transceiver just over here as well so yeah cool 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 uh, the prefix SS uh, before a starship name was used by some vessels uh, all the way back to the sleeper ships so the SS Botany Bay uh, the earliest warp ship like the Constago also used the SS prefix approximately a hundred years later freighters and transports were often given the SS prefix as well but the initials did not appear as standard uh, but the initials did not appear to stand for anything. Okay, there you go. So we have the crew, Gorn Battle, similar freighters as well. So here we have the reused model. So this is what I meant about interest in history as well. So I know there was a calls to have uh, the mattress in the collection as well, but you can see the reuse of it. So the Sanction, the Norkova, and many, many others as well. So again, just tweaking it ever so slightly, adding some, taking some away. But um, I think probably one of the more well-known, well, I think the two well-known ones will be the Batris and the Sosa. 
So one of the more memorable moments for me from Deep Space Nine as well, um, it wouldn't be my top Star Trek series, but I know a few people who it would be. But uh, I remember the scene where they were retrofitting the Deep Space Nine for kind of battle, basically. So again, the pop-out phaser turrets, the torpedo launchers as well, basically just retrofitting it and everything. And the battle scene with the Klingons as well was absolutely fantastic. So here we have a, a great piece from John Eves and some of his fantastic um, concept artwork there as well, which is great. So you can see the practicality of, you know, the hatches peeling back on these rails and the phaser emitters uh, basically coming out being extended. And then there we see them in action. Um, again, a formidable um, space station, D Space Nine is. So dual phaser, um, omnidirectional turret, which is cool. There's the runabout docking pad also here as well. So a lot of actual uh, concept art here and worked out. And then you see the planning off the loadouts, off these as well. And then we have on-screen appearances. So listen, check out the magazine. Stay tuned for the next issue, which is issue 122. We are finally getting our hands on the USS Jaeger. Loved by some, not loved by some others, uh, but we'll see. Um, I'm on the fence with this, so um, looking forward to seeing what lays inside there. And look at the concept art and the kind of logic behind it as well. But anyway, we close out on that and let's have a look at this model, shall we? So here we have Cassidy's ship. Let's take her out of her packaging and we put the stand to one side. And let's have a look at the ship, shall we? Okay, it is heavy. It's got a full load of cargo. It is very, very heavy in the back there. So um, it'll easily balance like that. It's not tipping forward at all. So kind of let's get up close and personal here with the Cassidy ship. So you can see there's a lot of detail, not a greebling on the ship. It's it's not the prettiest ship, but I said it was fit for purpose. Um, the color looks pretty nice on it, actually, to be honest with you. We have some detail in there on the hatches with uh, some slight differences in the kind of gray tones, just kind of highlighting some of the extra detailing here as well. Uh, we have some green highlights on the dorsal section. Ventral section is a little bit plain. But, um, yeah, like this potentially, again, could be landing down. So you wouldn't need a huge amount on here. But, again, there is detailing on the ventral section here. Um, the exhausts are nice. There's a kind of a blended paint application here as well, kind of with a gradient coming out of the way. But you have your nozzle detailing in there as well. Um, the sculpt's actually pretty good. And the paint application's pretty good as well. Like I said before... Rarely will you see these paint applications straying from their um, desired locations. But you will see windows straying as well. And that could be just a, a factor from a manufacturer where, you know, uh, over time they will stray out. Um, kind of lose calibration. Here we have some decal detailing here as well, which is actually quite nice. And then we have, that was the subspace receiver, I believe it was. So your command section, cargo, propulsion as well. So I'd, I'd assume cargo kind of comes over this part, engineering here, because they look like the three components for these systems. Again, this is over 100 years old um, from its use on DSpace 9, if memory serves. So curious what you think as well. And just while you're being curious, um, if you're curious to not miss any of my videos, do hit that notification bell as well that you'll see down around here somewhere. Uh, it's always supported. Always much appreciated for your support, I mean. And why not give the video a like as well, so that helps me out a huge amount. So yeah, let's see what it looks like on its stand, and uh, we'll compare it to a ship in the line, shall we? So sits well back on the aft, but there's enough weight back there that it holds it into place. You wouldn't want it to go side to side. Um, it will uh, waver off, but it just kind of sits just onto the edge of two of those exhausts. And it raises up ever so slightly, but hangs over the edge. So as you can see it like that, pretty decent, actually. And, and actually quite a sizable ship as well. We've gotten freighters in the past that haven't been as big as that. But um, yeah, let's actually, on that subject, let's compare 
to some other ships on the line and uh, get a sense of scale, shall we? So here we have a Bajoran freighter. So they would have shared the same space, I would say. Um, so decent size, actually. And um, you can see the difference in tone between the two of them as well. But two good complementary ships as well. An interesting thing with both of these ships, both of them have been modified as well to represent different types of ships in Star Trek uh, episodes as well. So I think that's kind of pretty cool little uh, feature combination with them as well. But um, yeah, that pretty much kind of wraps up uh, my review of the SS uh, Socia. Cassidy Yates freighter and uh, let me know what you think of the ship um, have you got it already are you going to pick it up um, what do you think of its inclusion in the uh, collection as well and have you any other alien ships that you'd still like to see let me know in the comments below and as always thanks for taking your time out of your day uh, to watch this video and if you can don't forget to like the video and hit that notification bell as well to stay up to date with all the current releases and as always i will see you in the next video so take it easy and goodbye